We did the superficial fat pads last week, and this week we're going to try and help you figure out something. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Aesthetics Mastery Show. I'm Dr. Tim Pierce. Hi, I'm Miranda Pierce. And today we're talking about the deep fat pads, the crucial anatomy you need to understand in terms of the deeper fat compartments. This is how to use them in your consultations, how to explain them to your patients, and how to use them in treatment design. So what are the deep fat pads? So as we touched on last week, the fat pads of the face are basically divided into superficial and deep. Um, generally the division is the SMAS. The SMAS is that uh, the superficial muscular aponeurotic layer that divides these two compartments. It's a bit more complex than that in the mid face as we're probably going to touch on. Um, but essentially that's the key, which is that some of these are deep and they're underneath the SMAS and those are the ones we're going to talk about today. Okay, so what is the purpose of the deep fat pads? So I like to think about fat pads as doing kind of three primary roles. There's obviously the purely biochemical, biophysiological role of producing energy when you need it. That's not really the thing we're most interested in. Next, we have the functional component. So this is that they actually provide a, a degree of support for the muscles so that they are uh, so they don't sag as easily and get stretched as easily. And they provide a point of leverage so that a smaller contraction might pull more tissue in some cases more easily. And then they also dampen the movement of the muscle as well so that a contraction isn't overly overt. So they're, they're kind of creating a harmonizing effect. And that's really where we get into the secondary category, which is these fat pads are creating an aesthetic difference. And that aesthetic, the way I think about aesthetics is it's a, it's a projection of health. So we're actually using what we call beauty is effectively health, but those fat pads are conveying a sense of health. If they're in the right place and they're at the right volume, it creates what we perceive as beauty. And that is conveying a sense of, of a healthy individual who's hopefully a happy individual who you want to engage with. And that's where, where the function of the face becomes almost a social skill. Like it's a, it's a social survival mechanism to look healthy. And um, that's where the fat pads play a really important role, which is that we want to project an individual's health through the way that they look, and this maximizes their opportunities. So where are the deep fat pads? When you Google deep fat pads, you're gonna get a recurring image, and the primary deep fat, fat pads are on that image that you will find, but there are actually more detailed images around that you can also look at, look at, and I'm gonna talk about, try and convey both of those so that, so that no one's confused when you Google fat pads uh, about how this matches with what you're gonna see on Google, for example. So some papers actually talk about four or five compartments that are just in the forehead, so we have um, occasionally a very small one reference, which is the subproceres or the galial fat pad. Um, there's also a subfrontal deep fat pad compartment. So the subfrontal, that just means underneath the frontalis and it's divided into two frontal septums. There are then two subfrontal fat pads between the inferior and the middle frontal septum. And then there are three subfrontal sub fat pads in the medial frontal septum. And then there are three deep fat pads superior to the medial frontal septum. So adding all of that together, you get five deep fat pads underneath the frontalis muscle. And this is very important for some injections where we're shaping the forehead or restoring uh, a more youthful shape to the forehead. So that's the forehead. Tell us around the eyes. So mainly around the eyes, we're talking in terms of the deep fat pads about the SUF, so the suborbicularis oculi fat pad, and that's actually divided into two different fat pads as the lateral and the medial SUF. And this is very important for tear trough. Effectively, this is what we are restoring when we treat the tear trough. So in the mid face, things are more complex. Now, if you look at most of those internet images, you'll find two main fat pads. We've got the buccal fat pad, which actually extends all the way underneath the zygoma into the temple. And then you also have the deep medial cheek fat pad. So more detailed descriptions actually include the deep lateral cheek fat pad and also the deep nasolabial fat compartment, which is located in the pre-maxillary space. So this is the deep fat pad, which actually lies on top of the levator labii superioris nasi muscle. It's a mouthful, but it's important to understand this because this is where the mid face is really different to the lateral part of the face because our deep fat pads can lie on top of muscles and it's because of this roof tile effect, which is quite unusual. And um, and it's just worth understanding that even though it's deep, it may there may sometimes be muscles underneath it just because of the way that they are placed. So how about the lower face? Well, in a lot of these textbooks, they actually don't talk about the deep fat pads much in the lower face, but with a bit of digging, you'll find that there are 
so there is some evidence that there is a deep fat pad compartment as well in the lower face. And what you'll find is that particularly the, the retro orbicularis oris fat pad, I think is relevant. So if you look at some very old faces, and particularly if they've lost volume or they're slim and they're old, like a 70 year old, um, you can tell that there's much less volume in that, in that whole structure where the mouth is. And it's useful sometimes with more holistic restorations when you're trying to really take years off someone that you're treating some of these deep fat pads as well. So retro orbicularis oris fat pad sounds like roof, but it's the Remember, it's orbicularis oris, not orbicularis oculi. Um, there's also the deep chin fat medially. So right in the middle of the chin, there's a fat pad that's underneath the mentalis muscle. And then there's also the deep labio mentala fat pad lateral to that. And those, those components make up the lower face. And they're very important in terms of stabilizing the position of the chin. And I do a lot of treatment relatively deep with a cannula that will help restore the, the chin, which I always say is like the cherry on the bottom. Um, because it, it, it gives you that heart-shaped face when you have a chin that ends at the low point of the face. How do I make the decision whether or not to inject the superficial or the deep fat pads? So in many places, I mean, you often start with deep. So I'd say mostly when you're, when you're looking at a face, you're kind of restoring the underlying structure. Those are a lot, often the deeper fat pads. Um, but actually, you inject in all of them. So, you know, if you've got a crease or you want to create a little bit more projection, I'll often layer it. So you'll do some injections deep and some superficial. I, I think we probably do a lot of the, the what's the, like the foundational work is deeper stuff. Um, but there's definitely a mixture of both in the, in the treatment. And, and you have to make that aesthetic judgment as you're going along. I will often do a first pass deep and then go and pick up some of the smaller details with more superficial cannula work in some parts of the face. How do you use your knowledge of the deep fat pads in the consultation? Well, the first thing is it's a really helpful thing for patients to understand that there's a, an anatomical basis for what they see. Because if they can, if they can relate a deficit which makes them feel a certain way to an anatomical change that you can then directly repair by replacing the lost volume. Um, that's a very neat story in the mind of someone who wants to look natural. So I find it incredibly useful in the consultation to talk about fat pads. Um, it's also Im important, I think, that there's a sound basis for your treatment. So this doesn't matter to everyone. Some people, particularly the more well-known you are, the more patients don't really care about the science. They just trust you and will let you do what you like. Um, but actually, most injectors don't have that luxury. And so when you, you need to almost present a case about why you're going to treat your patient in a certain way uh, in order to win their trust. So it's good to present that case of, of why I recommend this treatment based on as many fundamental ideas as you can get. And the anatomy is one, is one of the most important fundamental reasons to treat someone. How about treatment design? How do you use fat pads in that? Once you understand the anatomy of the fat pads, it becomes quite clear where you need to inject and how much you need to inject. So if you take temples, for example, um, the deep temple fat pad and the, the buckle fat pad is quite a large structure. It's about 15 mils in normal in youth. And obviously it shrinks as you get older. And if you're going to recommend a treatment and you're talking about the volumes, that's a very useful set of numbers to know that your normal buckle fat pad is 15 mils and it shrinks significantly as you get older. So if I put two mils in, that's not actually a very large treatment, but it, it helps, you know, where you're injecting, why you're injecting and how much you're injecting by understanding some of the properties of the fat pad. How much, how many mils is the temple? Do you know? Well, you'd, the most common kind of spectrum of treatment would be about half a mil on each side up until two mils on each side. But there's, there are always people further on in terms of the bell curve, and you can probably go as high as four mils each side in some people, if not even higher, to be honest. Are the fat pads the main thing that you use for making your treatment design decisions? Um, yeah, I think the fat changes are one of the, the primary changes, but actually where it really gets interesting is where we start to relate them to the ligaments. So the ligaments that attach the skin to the surface run through these fat pads and they the fat pads are creating potential spaces which change as you get older. So lost volume or excess volume combined with the ligaments that you can actually start to see little dips in the skin where the skin is held on, that starts to become one of the main features of aging. So it's the relationship between superficial, the deep fat and the ligaments that I think is possibly up to sort of 70, 80% of what you're actually seeing in terms of aging. So when you've got a good explanation of how they all relate together, which we'll cover next week, um, then you should know a lot more about how to guide a good treatment plan for your patients and how to give a good explanation of why you're recommending those more holistic, more beautiful natural results that you might get if you treat the face as a whole rather than just treating individual lines and wrinkles. Can you give us an example of where a ligament uh, works to show up aging? 
or most of the shadows that you get in your face so are, are basically ligaments. So the if you look at the orbicularis oculi retaining ligament, that's your tear trough. Your zygomatic ligament crosses your cheek. Nasolabial fold has an attachment like ligament, uh, similar with the medialabial fold here. That's caused by the mandibular retaining ligament. So these are all effectively break points where the fat pad is shifting and they cause that little shadow. That would be a great thing to say to a customer. If I, if I was on the end of that, I'd be thinking, wow. He knows his stuff and he's going to do the right thing by by and give me a natural look. Yeah, absolutely. Well, but this is true with all with all cases is that if you instead of assuming that you're the authority and that they should just listen to you, present a case, actually actually present it as if you're trying to convince a colleague why they should have the treatment and your trust levels go through the roof because they're actually learning something. And while they're learning something, you're demonstrating your authority and your knowledge. Nice. Oh, well, remember, if you would like a poster of the fat pads for your wall and your clinic, then you can get it in the link in the description below. And don't forget to like this if you enjoyed the show and also subscribe and hit the bell if you would like to be notified when we upload. Take care. Thanks for watching.